What's up everybody? My name is Shannon and I am still waiting for my satyr and today we are talking about Twilight Saga book Five, Midnight Sun by Stephanie Meyer. When I reread Twilight at the beginning of this year, I had no idea that this book was coming out, but it looks like my reread was perfectly timed. So this video isn't necessarily going to have spoilers per se, but I did want to talk about like who this book is for. Now, this book is literally a retelling of the first book in the series of Twilight, but it's from Edward's perspective. And we get a lot of scenes that are exactly the same as they were in the first book. It's just you're getting more flavor from like Edward's point of view like you there's a lot of like melodramatic stuff where like Edward is like spending pages and pages and pages like talking about like how he could murder everybody and how great Bella smells and like all this kind of stuff like that's why this book is so thick because it's Twilight with like 200 additional pages of just Edward being a dramatic person and just being so masochistic so you could technically read this without having read the rest of the series like without having read Twilight but I don't think that's who this book is for. Like this book is really for people who are like fans of the series. This book is for people who like love Twilight or like who had that Twilight phase, who like wanted to know everything about the characters, who love to make fun of it, like all that kind of stuff. Like this is really for like Twilight fans. And I say that because if you don't know like anything about Twilight or if you only know like the memes or like this, that, and other thing, you're gonna read this book and you're gonna hate it <laughs> because it's boring. It's like 600 plus pages and it's just a book that we already know the plot of with all of this extra embellishment that like you really don't need. Like it is kind of boring. It is very like self-indulgent. The best way I could describe this is that like, I truly feel like this is like a fan fiction that you would have read in like 2008, where it is Twilight, but you're getting so much Edward. I really think this has been in Stephanie Meyer's draft since 2008, but isn't a bad thing. Like that's totally fine. It's just very self-indulgent. If you aren't already a fan, I just don't think you're gonna like it. I have seen reviews out there that talk about how boring this book is, how pointless this book is. And it's like, yeah, it's not trying to do anything amazing. It's not trying to be anything crazy. It's not like really even trying to tell a new story. It's just for people who really like Twilight and who wanted a little bit more about it. With that being said, I did give this book four stars because like, <sighs> When I reread Twilight, I really came to this conclusion that the only real person is Bella and everybody else is kind of like a realistic or like a realized version of like these things that she wants or these like aspects of her. So like Edward isn't a real character per se. He's just the idealized version of like what Bella wants in a man or in a romantic partner. And because of that, when you shift the focus away from Bella, I feel like you lose a lot Lot of the charm that Twilight has. Like when I reread that book, I really did enjoy it. And I feel like when you're really looking at it from Bella's perspective, like everything does make sense. Like sure, she makes questionable decisions and sure, Edward's not the best person, but it's all about her and what she wants. So shifting it away and putting that focus on Edward, who I would say isn't necessarily like a real character, that's where it gets like a little bit ridiculous. Um, Edward is a horrible human being. <laughs> I guess he's not a human being, like that's the point. And Stephanie Meyer does make a point of like showing Edward to be non-human. He is very much other in the way that he thinks about things, the way he thinks about things like with Bella, which I think does clear some stuff up because he's not thinking about like a typical douchey teenage boy. Like he's thinking about a 100 year old vampire, like that kind of thing. But because of that, we get so much with him just like going on and on about how special Bella is and how beautiful she is and how she smells. There's this one part where she gives him her car key and she walks away and he smells her car key. I'm like, why? <laughs> so there's just a lot of like that kind of added embellishment in there, which was funny. It was entertaining. Is it like groundbreaking and amazing? No, but that's why I say like, if you're not a fan of Twilight, you're not gonna enjoy this book because it is very much self-indulgent for those of us who do really appreciate <laughs> the weird humor that is Twilight. So because of that, I don't think like any kind of like character development, any kind of like character building is being done with Edward here. Like he does go on like this journey of like learning to care about Bella, but especially knowing where like the story goes, I don't think those attitudes really change all too much. Like you do get more of a focus on like why he doesn't want her to be a vampire and like all that kind of stuff, but it does get to the point where it's like a little bit ridiculous. Bella literally is like a pet that he is taken in 
Megan has to remember to feed her and like, oh, she's adorable and I don't want to hurt her and blah, blah, blah. Like it, it really reads like Bella is a pet in this book. I don't think like the romance was like quite there like it was with Bella. And I kind of feel like that's because like Bella is so thirsty <laughs> um, and Edward is very thirsty, but he is like, he shuts it down at like every point. He is somebody who's just like, if you have sex before marriage, you die. On the topic of like characterization and characters, it's kind of, it kind of gives me pause that this book was published in 2020 and not like 2008. Although I do know that like Stephanie Meyer has been writing this book for a long time. I remember when like stuff, like people were even talking about this when I was in high school. So like it's been around for a while, but like when you reread Twilight, you can excuse a lot of the stuff that happens in it because it was, you know, it was released in 2005. But with this being released in 2020, I was hoping a little bit, like I wasn't expecting it, but like I was hoping for a little bit more with like Rosalie or like Alice or Esme, just like going a little bit more with like our female characters. Instead, it's very clear that every female character who is not Bella is awful. <laughs> Jessica is like this horrible thirsty girl that like Edward is forced to hear all of her thirsty thoughts all the time. And then Rosalie, like, yes, she is jealous that Bella is a human, but really what she's jealous of is that Edward finds her attractive and doesn't find Rosalie attractive. And Bella to Edward is just so not like other girls, <laughs> which I feel like by 2020, like we've kind of grown beyond that, like I'm not like other girls trope. Whereas like when Twilight came out, that was like very prevalent. So if you think about this as like in the context of Twilight, it's fine. But then when you're reminded that it came out in 2020, I'm just kind of like, oh, okay. Well, overall though, I think this was a really fun read. It was exactly what I thought it was going to be. I didn't think it was going to be like this amazing sweeping whatever. Like I knew it was going to be this melodramatic like take of what Edward was thinking during all of Twilight. So I'm not gonna knock it for that. It's exactly what I was expecting it to be. It's not the best though. Like it, it is kind of annoying that like it hasn't really seemed to grow beyond Twilight. It also seems like very affected by the popularity of Twilight, which I did mention I do think was a problem like when we got to Eclipse and when we got to Breaking Dawn. So it, I wish we could have seen like Stephanie Meyer grow a little bit more with this book, which I don't think we get to do. But again, like it's exactly what I was expecting. So I'm giving this book a B minus. If you are a fan of Twilight, I do think you should read this book because it's hilarious. It's so funny and it was really fun to read. And it's a really quick read because if you already know the plot of Twilight, like you can get through it pretty quickly. So even though it is 600 pages, Ages. Like, you know what's happening. You know what's going on here. Do I want an Edward POV of all of the books? Absolutely not. Maybe if they were like novella sized, I, I, like that would be fine. But I don't think I could take like a 600 plus version of New Moon with Edward being so angsty and wanting to kill himself. Like, I just think that would draw the line. But if it was like a novella, like I'd be here for it. So this book was really fun. I did really enjoy it reading it. I'm glad that I reread Twilight this year. And like I said, if you're a fan of Twilight, you're going to like this book. If you're already not a fan of Twilight, oh man, you are going to hate this one. <laughs> but anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, be sure to hit that like button down below and don't forget to subscribe to Top Books with me every week. That is everything I got for today and I will see you guys next time. Bye!